Welcome. Uh, today I want to go through and talk a little bit about some distributions. There's four particular distributions that uh, are sort of interrelated and work with each other and can be used to show you some uh, different concepts about the way that distributions work in statistics. These are the binomial and the Poisson and then the normal and the uniform. First of all, we need to understand that the uh, type of dis distribution can be affected by the uh, type of data that is collected. Uh, so you flip a coin, that's one type of data. You go and you measure the scores on a test, that's another type of data. I count the number of uh, bow weevils in a cotton field or something like that. That's another uh, type of data. So let's, look, let's do a quick review of the data types. Um, nominal is named. Hopefully that's something that you can remember real easy. Blue, green, red, yellow. I mean, you can't rank those. Which one is more important, red, yellow, green? You know, in, in school sometimes we had the, the blue birds and the yellow birds and the red birds and those kind of things. But it didn't take long for kids to figure out, especially me, that uh, the yellow birds that I was in was the slow reading group. Uh, so. Anyway, but it's a name group, but, you know, it's not always uh, ranked like that. Uh, boy, girl, heads or tails. Uh, you can't order those. You can't rank them. Ordered data. It does have some sort of order. Uh, cold, warm, hot. Uh, I mean, is the difference between cold and warm the same as the difference between warm and hot? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, we do surveys on a thing uh, using a, a scale that's you may hear called a Likert scale. Uh, a Likert scale is, uh, you know, strongly agree, agree, no opinion, disagree, strongly uh, disagree. And the interval, the interval and ratio, in both of them, the uh, has an equal interval but uh, the interval does not have a true zero. A zero that means something. Uh, and uh, the ratio has a uh, equal intervals and a true zero. So uh, test scores would be like a ratio where a zero means you got everything wrong. Um, but uh, something else um, that doesn't have a physical meaning associated with a zero uh, would just be an uh, interval. And so there's a, a classic example that you, you may see every once in a while um, that's used here. There's three temperature scales, the Fahrenheit, Celsius, the centigrade, and the Kelvin. And all of these are measured on, uh, an, or on equal scales on the scale, but only one has a true zero. In the Fahrenheit and Celsius, the zero is arbitrary. I mean, it's when, uh, on the Celsius, it's when water freezes. On the Fahrenheit, uh, zero is even down below 32 degrees. It's, it's you know, uh, uh, really cold. Uh, so uh, the zero is arbitrary. It doesn't have any physical meaning to us. So, but in Kelvin, then zero means the point at which all motion ceases. So it does have some physical meaning. I mean, everything stops there. So. Uh, just, just go through. That's just an example of the difference between interval and uh, and ratio. Um, so temperature measured on the interval scale on the Fahrenheit and Celsius scale, and it's measured on the ratio scale on the Kelvin scale. Okay, some other terms that we need to know as we go in to this uh, discrete. Discrete means that it's this value, this value, this value. I mean, there's specific values, counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, they have gaps between them. One and two has the same gap between two and three. There's a gap there. Uh, it's like counting people. Uh, there's one person, two persons, three persons. You don't go one person, 1.5 person, you know. Uh, well, I guess you could, but, uh, you know, normally you don't do that. But you, you have this, I mean, if you're counting the number of eggs that you get per day from your chickens, 
you know, you get one egg or two eggs or three gigs, you might get an average of 1.3 eggs, but you don't get that 0.3 egg. So the other type of data besides discrete is continuous, and in continuous there is a, uh, a infinite number of values. Uh, you can have, you know, a 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2345, 1 1.345. I mean, if we want to go and have 1.1 and 1.2, then we can go 1.15 between those two. If we want to go between 1.15 and 1.2, we can find a value of 1.18 between those. We can keep breaking it down. We can find an infinite number of values in between these values uh, if we wanted to do that. So uh, that's continuous. Any value along that continuum can occur. And so some distributions are going to be discrete and some are going to be um, continuous. Okay, binomial distribution measures nominal data, boy, girl, heads, tails. Poisson measures discrete probability that applies to occurrences of some event over a specified interval of time, distance, or area. This is often used to do rare events like earthquakes or how many times I get to the front of the line at the checkout counter. Uh, uniform, every value of the random variable is equally likely, such as rolling a dice. And then normal is a bear, bell shape and it's measured on interval or ratio data. So let's ask some questions. In which distribution is the mean calculated by NP? And then consider the histogram of the distributions which distribution has a plot that's rectangular? And which distribution is used to approximate the binomial? Okay, so we're going to go through and answer those questions. Let's look at this chart right quick. You see that the binomial with P is equal to 0.5 and N is 7 does have a symmetrical distribution. If you change the, the P to a different value, it won't be symmetrical. The Poisson is not symmetrical, but you can see it is still discrete. The normal continuous, a bell shape, and then the uniform, well, we've already answered one of the questions here, haven't we? Because the uniform, because each one of these values is equally likely, it's going to be shaped like a rectangle. So which one of these are symmetric? Well, this is going to be symmetric. If you draw a line down the middle, the right half looks like the left half, mirror image of it. Same thing here. Now, this one is, but this is only a special case. These two are not symmetric. So. Remember that the area under the curve is going to be equal to 1 or 100%. And that's why we can calculate these probabilities from these distributions. The binomial is going to be a fixed. And let me uh, break in here. What we're doing is, is uh, putting some previous videos into an, uh, in a current format that we can use them on YouTube. And so this concludes the, uh, essentially the first of probably three sessions on this part of it. But I did want to go through and, and make a, a quick comment. Uh, earlier in the video, we talked about a Likert scale, and uh, you couldn't see it. So uh, the Likert scale is uh, going to be, you know, uh, it's, it's a common scale that's used. It's a, like one is equal to strongly disagree to five is strongly agree or one, uh, and they're just weighted in that format. So uh, we're going to end this video, and then we're going to uh, start up with the second of these. So uh, stay tuned. There's more to come.